So now moving on to our slightly more complex model, this is what it's going to look like. So for this model, you may notice this pink part and this green part. They were from our previous model. But now we have a few more parts in here. And it's more of a 3D model. So if I nominal build this one, we now have this cover support, this cover, this hose compressor, And then down here we have a motor that mounts to the, co the uh, cover support. And then inside here we have our central roller and our roller cylinder bushings. There's a lot more going on in this model. When I now want to build and click deviate, see it moves around in all sorts of different directions. So the primary distance that I'm concerned with is the distance between my roller cylinder bushing here and my roller compressor over here in this current setup. So we could do this using the geofactor analysis, and actually we will do that. we will do that first just to cover that one again. <laughs> um, so again, you, to do that, I just click geofactor analysis, and I'm just going to click start here, and then this is the only measure in my model, and you can see that now I have different G factor values. This is no longer just a simple one-dimensional model. I now have a G factor of 0 0.5 to 8, 0 0.95, 0 0.46. So these are things that are going to make it much more complicated if you wanted to try to do this stack by hand. Some would say almost impossible to do it by hand. Um, and also you can see that my estimated worst case is still here. And my worst case is now about 5.64 versus 2.19 for my Six Sigma. So as Gary and I continue to convince you that maybe measuring for you know, designing for worst case m might be uh, not the most cost efficient way to do it. I wanted to point to numbers like these, where we're seeing that the Six Sigma value is 2.19, almost one third of our worst case value. And this is for six significant contributors, whereas we have a sum of five more contributors that's only adding up to 1.32%. So right now, our Six Sigma value is looking much better. And just to back that up, if I just simply ran my analysis, the standard number of runs. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Using a Monte Carlo simulation, we can see that our six minute value here is 2.14, which is in the same ballpark as our geofactor analysis. So our geofactor analysis is obviously accurate. Now, to do a worst case user DLL here, I'm going to go ahead and select the user DLL button. Now, in the user DLL button, I'm going to have a list of already loaded functions in this dropdown. And I'm going to select DCS SIMU worst case. That's the name of it. And I'm going to select run function next. Now, we'll see this dialog that I showed you in the PowerPoint. In this dialog, we can set a number of runs. We can set an initial seed. Well, how many runs is going to make sure that with all those given tolerances that I was seeing in my GeoFactor window, I'm going to get my worst case built using just Monte Carlo simulations? Well, that's where this spreadsheet comes into play. So with this spreadsheet, you enter your significant planar tolerances. So that would be like a position tolerance, anything that has a circular zone that it could end up in. And also enter your significant linear tolerances, which would be any linear dimensional tolerances, any you know profile tolerances in a linear position. Um, and then it's going to output how many runs I need. So 
to find the worst case. To find the worst case with a, with you know a certain level of confidence. Right. How many runs for the probability to give you the worst case? Mm -hmm. And this particular example, what is it we're talking about when we say worst case? For this particular example, we're talking about the distance between these two features. So we have a point on our roller here and a point on our compressor, and I just want to know the distance between those two. So the worst case would be how close can it get, how much interference can I see, and how far away can it get? What's my maximum gap I can see? And so looking back at my geofactor window, um, I can see that I have six critical tolerances here. And of those six, I have a position, a position, a position, a position, a position, five positions, and I have one linear. So entering that into this table, I can say I have five planar tolerances. Those are my position tolerances and one linear tolerance. Then our software here, our Excel spreadsheet here, uh, calculates how many runs I need to see 95% desired confidence. So uh, right around 350,000 runs. Um, I can also say, I don't want to do that many runs. That's a lot of runs. Um, then I can enter a number in here and say, I want to do 100,000 runs. And then it's going to come back with, well, then you're only going to be 57% confident that you'll find your worst case in that crop of runs. You might want to consider doing more runs. So why is it that why is it that the lower number of runs gives me a lower confidence interval? Why is that the case? Well, so for each of our inputs, so for example, for all of our position inputs, with our modal distribution, there are nine possible spots that we're checking. In reality, there's more than nine. But we only check nine because if we went to more than nine, if we went to check you know, all 360 degrees and all possible positions across the hole, and we had, say, two position tolerances, we could be here all day checking it because there's just so many possibilities. So we go with nine. Right. I mean, if you think of nine dice, yes. and you threw the nine dice on the mm -hmm. table, how many times would you have to throw those nine dice on the table for all nine to land on six? Mm -hmm. You know? And that's just a simple example. Yeah. And so we have nine for position and two for the yeah. linear tolerance. And then for linear, we just check the maximum and minimum value. Right. So we have all of these variables that we have to hit the combination that hits the worst case. Yeah. And that's why you have to run so many simulations. So to Gary's example, in this case, I have five nine-sided dice, and I have one coin that I flip, I guess. Two-sided dice? Um, yeah, that's what a coin is. Yeah, I yeah. have a coin. Um, five so, dice. so I have five nine-sided dice and one two-sided die, and I want to see every possible combination of that coin flipping heads or tails and these dice coming up one through nine. So I want to see five ones, heads, five ones, tails, four ones, a two, and heads, four ones, a two, and tails. And so on and so Maybe forth. Get the point. <laughs> and so that's <laughs> and so that's all the simulations we're trying to go through, but we're not piecing through it like I just did and doing one on one two. We're using Monte Carlo simulations. We're leveraging the random number generator that 3DCS has. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have this confidence level. Instead of just plowing through all of them, we can do it in fewer simulations by saying we only want ninety five percent confidence that we're hitting. So if I go back into 3DCS and I go back into that user DLL window and I enter in this 353,788 number, now I can select start analysis and then it'll start calculating my 353,788 simulations. We'll start running. So right now it's going to take two minutes to do it. I'm just going to go ahead and cancel out of it because I already have the results open. So I'm going to sit here and wait for two minutes. And I'll go ahead and open up those results. 
And we can see that we got a worst case range of 5.35 here. And our geofactor results gave us a worst case range of 5.64. So they're using different methods to get there. So they're going to have you know, slightly different numbers. Um, they're within 10%. And in this case, from looking at my model with my engineering judgment and perspective and experience of being a dimensional engineer for a while, I know that this is a linear model. I know that GeoFact is going to return me a good, pretty accurate result because I can see that all my tolerances are going to act in some linear fashion to it. And I also know I don't have any elements in here like a pattern move, for example, which I have turned off, or a iteration move or conditional logic that lead to you having a non-linear model. This is a purely linear model. So I know that GeoFactor might have more accurate results. All of these simulation runs may have given me less accurate results in this case. And that's because we're only checking nine positions for our Position. planar tolerances, exactly. Whereas GeoFactor is doing a better job lining them up, I'll say. But once I have conditional logic in there, once I turn that pattern move on, once I add conditional logic, once I add an iteration move, then you're going to need this DLL in order to do that because GeoFactor is no longer going to be able to calculate what your worst case could be. Correct. So just to repeat that yes. in, in summary is mm. GeoFactor is an excellent tool when you're working with linear tolerances and linear moves. Well, not even necessarily just linear tolerances because that implies that we aren't using circular tolerances. Oh, sorry. And it can handle circular tolerances as long as they're affecting the measure in a linear way. Gotcha. Yeah. So as long as you've got a linear relationship, yes. GeoFactor can get you a, a reliable answer. Mm -hmm. But since you have nonlinearity from a pattern move, conditional logic, or an iteration move. Um, That's when we're going to want to switch the user DOL and rely on those results more. How about X-plane move? The X-plane move. I'm going to go ahead and say... <laughs> Don't give me that look, Gary. Yeah, we, just <laughs> we just introduced the X-plane move. Yeah. Uh, I think the X-plane move would be fine with the GeoFactor because it's, it's finding the single position every time. When you, random, you yeah. randomly deviate There's no the tolerance. Yeah, you randomly deviate the tolerances and then the X-plane move finds one position. So GeoFactor should be... I'm going to tentatively agree with you on that. Yeah, and I'm tentatively giving you. Yeah, answer. yeah, yeah. That's that's the same answer I was thinking. So. Yeah. All right. That's a good question. That is a good question. I, I mean, I haven't tested it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. So when you're setting up the DLL, you had the um, the mag factors and the the angular was yeah. angularity factors on the right hand side, also threads. Could you just um, repeat where those numbers yeah. come from? Okay. Because it wasn't. I mean, I think he went over it very quickly. Actually, he didn't go didn't, over it. I didn't go over it. He, oh. he stated that when we run the DLL, that yeah. we're using nine factors, but it's right there. So what this is doing is it's checking. We can set a custom value here, and so this is going to check two locations for all of my linear tolerances and nine locations for all of my angular tolerances, and this is just setting my modal distributions. So if I were to move this down to five, I would only need fewer runs to technically find all of the possible dice rolls that could happen in that setup, but I'm also getting less accurate results. Mm -hmm. And as we already covered, even only checking nine might not be enough, so you might want to leave it up there. You could, you could amp that up yeah. if you thought you weren't hitting the worst case. Well, nine is the maximum, I believe. Oh, then you can't change it. <laughs> yeah. So and the, if, the if you would, could change it, it would take even more time. Yes. And the two and nine are the default values then? Yes. yes. Okay. And then threads, of course, yes. is for our multi-core processing. Yes, threads is for our multi-core processing. So you can choose between zero and four threads. I have it on four so it runs as fast as possible. Also, is using as much of my CPU as possible. Um, but that's fine for me right now because I'm not doing anything else with this computer than running this. Right. So the threads is just how many cores you yes. want to utilize on your processor mm -hmm. uh, when running the analysis. So it'll speed up your analysis, but it will use more of your computer's resources. Anybody, do you know what's the default when you launch this? Uh, I think it'd be zero when okay. you first so, launch it. So you have to change that from zero to four if you yeah. want to use it. Because the whole multi-core thing is new, we added that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
Yeah, so, so for the mag and angularity, uh, you would recommend always using make the default values to a nine? Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm going to recommend, yes. Yeah. We give you the option to decrease it, but mm -hmm. why? Yeah. 